Hey guys, welcome to Rihanna's Lens, where I interact with you about the components in the STEM field and introduce you to fascinating people who passionately inhabit the scientific and technical frontiers of our society. My name is Rihanna Malhotra and I'm absolutely elated to share this podcast with you. On this episode, I will be discussing about the extraterrestrial life. 50 years ago, astronomers picked up a radio signal from deep space. The signal repeated so regularly, it kept time better than an atomic clock. Well, what could that be? That couldn't be natural. They thought it might be an alien transmitter, so they nicknamed the signal LGM-1 for Little Green Men. A lot of us put aliens in the same category as ghosts or a subject for science fiction. It is left to the cranks, cooks and conspiracy theorists. But time and again, scientists have found evidence of extraterrestrial life. In 2016, astronomers proposed that never-before-seen dimming patterns from a star could be evidence of gigantic structures built by an advanced civilization to harness the star's energy. But that wasn't it either. It just turned out to be dust. Scientists feel confident that there is biology beyond Earth. Not because they have found it. They haven't found it. It's because, if not... The Earth is some kind of huge miracle. For most scientists, studying the universe searching for aliens isn't absurd. What's peculiar is that we haven't found them. In a universe so vast, where is everybody? There are about 10 to the power of 22 total stars. That's about 10,000 stars for every grain of sand on Earth. A conservative scientist says 5% of those stars are similar to our sun, which means there are 5 billion billion suns in the universe. Nobody could say for sure if there were any planets outside our solar system until the 1990s. Now, Scientists think one in five sun-like stars in in a planet similar to our own. We've also found life on Earth in places no one expected to find. We see life deep in the subsurface of the planet, miles down in like gold mines. There's life in nuclear reactors and even near volcanoes. We see life in the most extreme areas. So this gives us hope for research of life elsewhere because we can't expect that all planets have uh, exactly Earth-like conditions. Earth is only a third of old as the universe. So there has been plenty of time for life to evolve to uh, advanced civilizations and for these civilizations to spread across the galaxy. With all that time and all that space, the math seems pretty clear. We should have found aliens by now, or they should have found us. Scientists have found their own theories about why we haven't found aliens. Most widely believe we have found aliens, but the government just covered it up. This is supported throughout the years because of the mysterious sightings of UFOs. However, it does make sense because exploring UFOs won't necessarily mean that we have found extraterrestrial life. Some think aliens came here but they didn't like what they saw and moved on. And some think that we are not smart enough to be able to communicate with them. For example, take that you have had an ant infestation in your house. And now let's say you want to have a conversation with those ants. Will you say, excuse me, can you leave? Like, how can you even do that? We're all not at the same level. 
where if they wanted to talk to us, they couldn't even communicate with us. Some scientists believe that maybe galaxies heavily colonized, but not just near us. They're somewhere far, far away. The great filter theory helps us think about what we don't know about life. Imagine the evolution of life as a series of hurdles. First, molecules start replicating themselves, which evolves into single life, a single cell life. Then multi-cell life, and then animals with large brains that can use tools. And then smarter animals that create even better tools. That's us. And finally, animals that can figure out how to colonize the galaxy. Given the size and the age of the universe, it seems like a lot of alien species should have beat us to that last stage. Unless one of those stages is much harder than we think. We now know of 3,500 planets outside our solar system. Most of them we just discovered in the last five years. And now, our tools are only getting better. The next generation of space telescopes will be available to see distant galaxies. A newly launched satellite will survey the entire sky for possible planets, rather than just small sections. And astronomers are de developing new technologies that would let them see distant planets directly. This is a multi-generational search. We are just starting now. We are just planting the seed for a really long endeavor. Whether we find extraterrestrial life or learn we are alone, it will tell us about, a lot about our civilization and what our future might be. The importance for the search for life elsewhere in the universe is the search in understanding ourselves. It's important to understand how did we, as a planet, come here? And how rare are we or are we not? And for humans, it's the understanding of what's the next step for us. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been an interesting episode and I'm looking forward to the next one to discuss further on STEM fields. Make sure you share this pod with your friends if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned!